Hey guys, Board Now back with you. On this video, I'm going to be talking about the fifth and the sixth episodes of the X Files season two. It is, of course, a famous two parter. It's Dwayne Bar Barry and Ascension. So I will be going into full spoilers just to warn you. This review goes out to Cindy Palacidas, one of my regulars, who's a massive X-Files fan. So I hope you enjoy the review, Cindy. And this pair of episodes debuted on US TV in October 1994, a week apart. And the first one, Dwayne Barry, which, by the way, is directed and written by Chris Carter... That got 13.9, roughly, in the Nelson ratings, whereas the sequel, Ascension, a big jump up, actually, 15.5 million viewers roughly saw that one. And I think the jump up can be attested to just how good Dwayne B Barry was. People were gagging for more the, the following week, so that is nice to see that jump up. So I'll get into the episode. I've already or episodes, I've probably already slightly spoiled my thoughts because, hey, this is a big two-parter in the X-Files universe. It really is a changing point for the show and it gives the show a whole new focus. It pays off much of what has been set up in previous X-Files episodes where when it comes to mythology and, yeah, the lore of the show and, and how it views UFOs and certain things, so... So it is a two-parter, and I think that's the way you have to view it. And I think the reason it works so well as a two-parter is because the episodes complement each other. You know, the first one, Dwayne Barry, is more of a bottle-type situation for a lot of the episodes, where you have this character, the title character of the episode, played by Steve... Riles back this well-known character actor who just brings all this anxiety, this sweaty sort of tension, unpredictability. It almost feels a bit like a more kind of, I don't know, sort of disturbed version of Stone Cold Steve Austin where anything can like happen to, to him. And he believes that he has been abducted by aliens. In fact, we see like a scene... That indicates that at the start, but he ends up in a mental asylum, and I think that brings into question his sanity and if it really happened to him or if he just imagined it. And hey, there's the speedo shot of Mulder. I've got to flag that up <laughs> as as it appears on the screen, because there's definitely some bromance going on with Mulder and Crytrek in this episode. But I thought it was only right to have a, a speedo shot of mould again out of the pool second only to Xander Harris in Buffy in Cullfish I would say but yeah fun fact from Cindy actually then David Duchovny insisted on on wearing speedos for the shot not not trunks because he had some experience of swimming professionally and he was like hey you know, we don't wear trunks, we wear speedos, so, so that's a, a nice little touch, but who wouldn't be hot for Mulder in those speedos? Certainly Crycheck is, is getting a good look, and I don't blame him. So yeah, Barry is in a mental in institute, but he breaks out, and he kidnaps the doctor, and then he goes to, like, a travel agent, <laughs> and this is what's so perfect about this, this setup, is... He's waiting for instructions. He claims he's being controlled by aliens and claims that he's gone to a travel agent because he's awaiting his next destination. That is just such a perfect touch. So that becomes the focus of the first episode where he has a group of hostages in the travel agents and it's Mulder who's called in, obviously Crytrek along with him, to essentially be a negotiator to, to like talk him down and talk to him over the thing and it seems like they've they've gotten molded because of his background but also you have this this character played by cch pounder who's a another really great guest star such a good actress and she at first is very cynical about the whole ufo thing and just 
tells Moda whatever you need to tell him, just make sure you 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 save the hostages. Make sure you 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 talk him down, and. She very much is against Mulder playing too much into his like beliefs or psychosis, and uh, there's a certain script, and and that's another really interesting aspect because of course Mulder having these beliefs and and being a rebel himself, he's he's not just going to follow her script, and he does end up becoming personally involved. And I think that's what's compelling about the episode is it's it's Mulder walking that fine line between his past because of what happened to his sister and his beliefs and, you know, becoming actually sympathetic to Barry, but also trying to do his job and, and save the hostages. So so it's a real fine tightrope. And it's what gives the episode a lot of layers because Mulder isn't just going to toe the line. And you have great cameos, as I said, CCH Pounder, very reliable. And she has a, a nice little arc in herself where actually by the end of the episode she thanks Mulder for, for what he did and is actually quite nice to him after being quite a little bit demeaning. But And sh- she even later on gives him like the, 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 the object which ca- came out of Dwayne Barry's mouth after they... they 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 essentially shot him, which leads into the next episode. But in any case, it's a really tense bottle of the week style episode. Um, some great character moments. Actually, speaking of Pounder's character, I, I absolutely love the scene where <laughs> Crycheck. It's like after she's had like a conversation with Mulder, Crycheck comes up to her. And it's like, can I can I do anything? And and she's like, yeah. What's your name? He's like, Crycheck. And she's like, yeah. I'll have a, a regular cappuccino or whatever the order is, and gets him to go out and get coffee. And and considering kind of what a slimy douche Crycheck is, you've got to enjoy the moment where he's just again treated like a puppy dog. And it seems to be like like a, a running theme where he just can't get any respect, even though he is this mole and he's doing his best sort of routines. He just can't be taken seriously, even by someone who like has no reason not to trust him. So that's really great stuff. But yeah, as I was saying, the focus of the episode is this sort of bottle-style situation and just the interaction between the characters and the whole suspense, because I think they do create suspense, as in, is Barry just insane or or are these experiences real? And I guess, in a way, there's a blurring of the two. Rails back plays him so, so well, just this intensity and brings a real humanity to him as well. I think there are like more subtle, intimate moments which he brings out very, very well. The episode's very well directed. Um, obviously, at one point, Mulder comes in and, and he pen, depends to be like an EMT and he uses that to try and talk, you know, Barry down. They have to get a hostage out who's been shot. Um... But it's all very well done. It's great drama. There's a nice little scene where where they talk Barry into letting like like the hostages go, pretty much. Um, certainly, like the women who were working there, and and like one of the young girls, she she comes up to Barry and says, "For what it's work worth, I believe you." And that's really, I really love that 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 little moment. But yeah, the stuff with Mulder and Barry is just so great. And I think what's what's fantastic also is that Scully plays such a huge part in this two-parter. So first of all, she comes in and she's the one who actually changes Mulder's mind. Now, she gets this information about Barry that in his past he was shot in the head in the line of duty because that's another thing that's revealed that he's a former FBI agent which um, the the Pounder character doesn't tell Mulder at first so Scully just believes because of this he's insane then he has like a split personality 
disorder. And I think, again, that really raises question marks over the character and, and makes it all very interesting and intriguing. So that's when Scully comes in and says, you've got to get Mulder out of there, and actually starts talking in Mulder's headset. And there's this sort of term where eventually they kind of instruct Mulder to, once the hostages are, are out and safe, to like go to get Barry to, to go over to the window. And I think, as Cindy pointed out when we were like streaming this last night, it's actually Scully who, who convinces him. She is the crucial piece in the puzzle. Because Mulder, I think, wasn't going to do it. I think he was quite sympathetic sympathetic to, to Barry. <clears throat> and it's actually Scully's, like, inference that, that changes that. And Mulder, like, hey, you know, you forgot to lock the door. Go over and do that. And that gives them the shot. And it's it's a it's a great scene and the fallout from it because Mulder clearly regrets it afterwards and Barry obviously goes off to the hospital. And yeah, Scully says, I know you feel bad, but you did the right thing. <clears throat> and boy does this cliffhanger really grab you at the end of this episode because imagine just watching at the time, I think you largely would have thought then they're rounding this story up. Uh, probably you might believe, assuming that Barry survives, which it's obvious that he's probably going to at the end of this one, then you might sort of think then they'll come back to it at some point. But I think going into the final minutes, you would think, yeah, this isn't a two-part. They're, they're sort of rounding this up for now. And then you get the, like, the shock of what happens which again just changes the game because Scully has this object which they get out of Barry's mouth lodged in his teeth and she sort of tries it randomly on this supermarket scanner and the whole thing just goes like bananas and she she's she then starts saying well I've not seen anything like this it's almost like he was being catalogued and this is when the whole like mi military thing starts to come into it. But the ending is just great because Dwayne Barry essentially escapes again and he he goes after Scully and and they sort of get around this plot hole in a way because y you're going to ask the question, well, h how did he find Scully? But Mulder actually are answers that in the next episode assuming you you sort of go with that that reasoning but the idea is then this this cat this um well this object that scully has from barry is a way to like draw him to to her so that's how he finds her and yeah it's a great end of the episode with Barry at the window, like the shot of the rain pouring down, him staring at Scully. It's it's a great horror moment. It it just a jump out your seat style moment, and I love the direction actually from Carter because we cut to like the answering phone machine because she's like called Mulder, and is starting to tell him about what happened, and that's when Barry bursts in and and like kidnaps her. And you you just you you hear it off screen, and it cuts to like the answer phone, and the episode like cuts to cuts to black with with um, Scully saying, "Yeah, you know, well, just shouting Mulder, Mulder, and to be continued." And it's such a brilliant gut punch, such a brilliant cliffhanger, and it really ups the stakes for the next episode. It's a great sort of cliffhanger and Scully's obviously in jeopardy she gets kidnapped and we get the full out and I think the reason Ascension works so well is that it's like an emotional payoff to what happened in Dwayne Barry and it just further adds to the mythology and the whole thing around him I mean when he's like describing the stuff to Mulder and what happened to him that again brings back into play some of the stuff they've set up since the start of the X-Files. So he mentions, you know, losing time, for example, obviously the flashing lights. 
Um, probably one weakness, I think, in the first episode is then when you get these sort of flashes of Barry being adopted, supposedly, by the aliens, is it does look very cheap. The aliens look quite cheap. And I think it does look like it's being filmed on a, on a soundstage a bit. Uh, it's actually well directed, but... The, the actual effect of it looks a bit sort of cheap. I think it sh- it shows that they're on a low budget at this point in the show. But it, it's one minor nitpick. It, it doesn't really take away from the episode too much. Um, but I do like the callbacks from earlier in the show when it comes to Alien Induction. And I think another cool touch in the second episode, Ascension, is that obviously when Mulder finds out he's taken Scully, he's frantic, he's he's nervous, he's worrying about his his partner or ex-partner at this point. And he actually starts having visions himself where he's imagining what Dwayne Barry's doing to her or or what's going to happen to Scully. And that's really clever because, first of all, it makes sense. But secondly, it's almost like he's becoming Dwayne Barry again. It's like they're in one in a way. He sort of has these visions like like Barry would about the episode. Imagining it, it's not necessarily what's happening, but becomes the focus where Barry's got Scully. And Mulder's theory is then... He's taking her to this point that he told Mulder about, this like mountain point, and that he's going to use her to be adopted, so the aliens will adopt her, which means he won't get adopted. That's his whole theory, where Barry is like driving with Scully in, in the boot of the car, and at one point they're pulled over by like a marshal or a local cop because they're going too fast. And that scene is, like, really ten- intense as well. But it escalates because the cop hears, like, Scully, like, rumbling in the boot. But I just love, again, the acting from Riles back in that scene and just the character stuff with, with him as Barry because he starts saying, I'm sorry, I get to somewhere. I, I, I've got... Don't stop Dwayne Barry, he says at one point. Um, Please, for your own sake, so unstable and kind of off the wall. But I I kind of enjoy the fact that there is a humanity. The fact that she doesn't want to hurt this this innocent cop. But in his mind, at least, he's got to get going. He's got to continue moving forward to to this, this meeting point. Shooting the cop. Um, and it's also before that bit where we get the red right hand from um, Nick Cave. It's such a great eerie type song for them to use. From Mulder and Crycheck in, in the episode. So I sort of do ship them, kind of. And I do think that Crycheck, despite working Mulder, does sort of care about him and has a little crush, maybe a man crush. Because actually sort of scene of the episode or certainly line of the episode is when they're in the car and they're heading to this point and Crycheck is like trying to convince Mulder to to like let him drive for a while because Mulder hasn't slept for like ages and that's pretty great as well. It reads him like these mindless statistics about how so many people die a year from from no sleep and her molder's response is well do, do do they tell you the st- statistics on on how many people have died from their boring um like statistics you can read it either way because he's obviously i think trying to get a handle on the situation because he's he's working for the government because the whole suggestion is that the military are are involved in this and that they they sort of want want it contained. Cable car, of course, or Mulder does. And this is a great scene. So I was talking about the limitations with the aliens and the budget in that case, but this is one example where they really use the budget very well because this whole cable car sequence and you've got Mulder at one point, he's like on top of it because <clears throat> Crycheck finally 
makes his move where he knocks out like the operator and Mulder is stored up there and he's he really goes all James Bond because he gets on top of the cable car and his plan is to like just use the wire to like launch down but so it does feel kind of like a bond scene it really looks good it really looks convincing it just looks kind of cool i think there should be more scenes in like movies and tv with like cable cars and stuff it's it's really good stuff and th this is where the episode has a very sort of Twin Peaks style episode. Definitely a show that influenced the X-Files. And it, it all looks very good and very, like, the shot of the woodland and stuff does look very Twin Peaks. But, yeah, we see how cold Crytek is and just how ruthless he is when he knocks out the cable guy. That's obviously when Mulder starts getting an ink in that. I mean, he had been wary of Crycheck anyway, but I think this is what starts to make it twig than, hey, maybe this guy is is legitimately working me than he is like a mole for, for the FBI. Because when he like radios back from, from the cable car, he, Crycheck is nowhere to be found. He's not answering him. Order, of course, escapes. And he makes it to this, this location. And Scully's gone. Drain Barry's there. He's actually like sort of screaming like a madman. They've taken her. They've taken her. And he's just rejoicing in, in because they didn't take him. And Mulder catches him, arrests him. And they start to question him. And that's when he starts saying all this stuff about the military. And they're, they're in on it. And again, this is a really good scene in making Barry sympathetic and, and certainly at least empathising with him because sorry to Mulder about what happened with Scully and says, I hope they don't hurt hurt her. And, and Mulder takes a pause and even though obviously he's very much his concern his, is Scully, I, I think he does recognise in the moment that, that Barry is being sincere. The point where Crytrek steps in and you see him in there with Barry and Mulder sees him in there and, and he comes in and's like, hey, I'm the only one who's going to talk to him. But wouldn't you know it, the next thing you know, Dwayne Barry is dead and check meet with cigarette smoking man and, and he tells him to back up Mulder's version of events. It's a way to keep Mulder on, on side. And so we have this scene with Skinner and cigarette smoking man the hires up and and that's fishing on Mulder because he was obviously in there interviewing him. And Crycheck's claim is that then he only went in there because he saw him choking, so he was checking on him, which obviously we know is is, is bullshit. But he does back up Mulder's version of events. So when um Mulder finds the cigarette a pack of cigarettes in the in in Crycheck's car where that's the final piece of the puzzle and he 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 knows he's been talking to council man and he brings this to Skinner he actually does a report on it which is pretty impressive then Crycheck was a mole and the military's in on this and there's some great lines in, in for dialogue alone. I think this episode actually beats Dwayne Barry because there's a scene where Mulder is is giving his version of events and the conspiracy theory to this room of people. And at one point, Skinner says, "Well, why would the military cover this up?" And 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 Mulder's like, "Well, because they know where Agent Scully is." And this other guy in the room is like, "Why are you so paranoid?" And Mulder's like, well, maybe it's because I find it hard to trust anyone. <laughs> and that, that's, that's a brilliant line. But, yeah, ultimately, when he brings this theory to Skinner about Crycheck back in, and, and he's nowhere to be found, he's disconnected his phone and he's disappeared, Mulder just, like, flips out. Oh, so that's it? He, he just disappears, and Skinner's like, well, it would appear so. But then Skinner steps forward with with the brilliant line Mulder's like what can you do and Skinner's like there's only one thing I can do Agent Mulder I'm reopening the X-Files because that's what they fear the most 
the most and you're like yes come on go Skinner go that's so cool Skinner really goes up in that scene um, and I think that's what's good about the Skinner character is that he's obviously not as far out there and as much as a rebel and this stuff as Mulder but at the same time he's not if he sees it reasonable he's not going to toe the line neither and he will do it for official channels so it's almost like he feels there's justification in reopening the X-Files so that's that's sort of where we are at the end of the episode and Scuddy's still missing she apparently has been adopted by aliens which again changes the whole game of the show once again changes the, the whole thing the whole dynamic of the X-Files moving forward and you know I'm sort of going to rate these two together they, they are a two part really. that I, I'm going to give them a 10 together because they complement each other and they do different things I think Ascension's a really strong episode anyway on its own it's not as good as Dwayne Barry but it's still a really solid episode and I think it pays off Dwayne Barry so it's an important episode in itself and sure, if it wasn't a two-parter and you were judging them separately, then that would be different. But because it's part of the same story, Ascension does does a good job for me and carries that on very nicely. Obviously, very intense, you know, sort of scary pair of ep- episodes at times. Some great imageries, well directed. I, I think. Like in in the first episode, for example, when it needs to be intimate and more personal and very handheld style, it it does that. But then obviously in in the second episode, it opens that up a bit more and we get some like broader sort of imagery and really personal character stuff and some some great lines as well. So ticks all the boxes and, and just such a crucial pair of episodes in the X-Files universe so so actually this might be controversial but because of all the great stuff you get over the course of these two episodes it's actually going top of my list when it comes to the X-Files and it's actually going above ice so ice which is a classic in itself slips down to two and I'm putting Dwayne Barry and Ascension at the top, and I don't do that lightly, it's a very tough call, but there you have it, That's I will update the list of course, but thanks for listening, and I will continue with the X-Files Season 2 next time, so we'll have three, yeah, I had to remember, that. that's that's the vampire style one, with David Duchovny's girlfriend at the time, so, so that'll be coming out next time. Thanks for listening, let me know your thoughts, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again soon.